What's up guys, Tao here. Um, today I will do a uh, Hackintosh file or media server um, installation guide. Now just to give you guys a context, what's the reason behind it. Um, ever since I had this uh, workstation, Hackintosh workstation built, um, I've been trying to shift the files uh, onto a separate device. Uh, so I decided to just build a separate a system, Hackintosh system. Uh, I can use as a file server, as a media server, uh, predominantly it's Plex server and also acting as a fail safe uh, secondary uh, system so just in case my main workstation failed I still have access to all my files and hopefully I can work everything as normal if you guys are interested stay with me First of all, let me just run through the hardware I will be using for this build um, first of all the processor um, I'll be using uh, these uh, Intel i5-7400T uh, The clock speed I believe is at 2.4 GHz and then boost up to 3 GHz Now the good thing about this uh, particular processor, the maximum TDP is only 35 watts So uh, it's ideal for a, a file server or any kind of server Now the motherboard to go with it, uh, this actually is a brand new motherboard The reason I chose this, uh, first it has a a six SATA connector so I'll be putting I think at least four or five drive in the case so this is really really good and also have a M.2 slot uh, just in case in the future I want to use the M.2 for the system drive but uh, in this case I will all, I'll be using this uh, Intel uh, 730 series um, SSD 2040 gig as a system so I won't be using any M.2 uh, SSD in this build now the memory this actually it, I've taken out from my um, workstation build. It's a 16 gig uh, Crucial Ballistic uh, DDR4 uh, RAM uh, running at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, ever since I upgraded a RAM for the workstation to 32 gig, so I'll be using this for this build. Um, the power a PSU is the Corsair SF450. Uh, again, this is also my old uh, PSU. To go with it, this I think this is a Silverstone um, SF power supply to ATX power supply adapter. I think it's made by uh, Silverstone. The CUDE processor, here I have a Noctua, uh, I think it's L9i, ultra low profile uh, CPU cooler because the TTB only 35 watts. So pretty sure this is efficient. Uh, now the fans, right now I got nothing in the case, so I'll be using uh, these two fans. This two fans again actually uh, taken out from the Fractal uh, Mesh 5C case, so this is too spare. I'm just use it. I'm literally scrap everything for this build. And what else? Uh, thermal compounds, Arctic thermal compounds. Uh, now I have here some uh, rubber fan mounts. I've been using this before. Uh, it's the Nocto one. Uh, they're very very good, uh, reduce the vibration. Now the case, I have this case for a little while, a long while now. I've been modifying and then reuse it and uh, modify again so kind of uh, it's a mess right now but I will uh, put this together, um, put everything, put all the components, hopefully this will work alright and the good thing is this case can accommodate I believe I think seven drives five uh, three and a half inch drive and two two and a half inch drive so in my opinion it is ideal for a home server or if you just want to use a, a storage server very very good uh, it's, uh, it's a Phoenix Phenom ITX uh, case before I do anything else I need to fix this case first uh, right now this case is a mess everything is uh, uh, taken apart I will put this case together and we will go ahead with the hardware installation.
The system actually has finished. Uh, this is the uh, bare bone system. Um, I have uh, four SATA um, connection on there. One is connected to the uh, SSD right now. That's the system drive. I also have a three spare ones. Just uh, in the future, I can expand it. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch on, make sure everything's uh, up and running. Now, if everything's up and running, I'm gonna. Uh, install the uh, Mac OS C around that and then after the OS I'm gonna try to put all the hard drives in if I have time um, otherwise uh, I will leave this as it is so as of now the bare bone system it's um, it's ready to go all right guys I have the system connect to the TV and now I'm just gonna switch on and make sure everything's all right now when you switch on um, Press delete and then you will go into the BIOS setup. Uh, one thing I have to say that uh, the motherboard I have, uh, the BIOS came with it is the F6. I uh, can see here, uh, where is it? F6. Now there is a latest BIOS is F8B that actually update the, the processor microcode so that I think that is respond to the the meltdown and the Spectre uh, lately is going on the internet. So I will strongly suggest you update to the latest BIOS. All right, here's the um, Q flash. So I have a USB connect to the uh, USB already. Um, I'm gonna just do a BIOS update. Actually, find the USB here. Uh, click on the BIOS and then it will verify and it will update. So remember, do not disconnect or power off the system while we're doing update, otherwise your system will be uh, rendered invalid. So very important. All right, the BIOS update completed. Um, as you can see here, uh, it's F8B. That is the latest from Gigbyte. So make sure you do that. Uh, in terms of the BIOS settings, I will suggest you first go to save and exit and load optimized default. And um, after that, there are only very um, few changes you actually need to make in order to make the system bootable. Um, just quickly, so the Windows 10 storage option. Uh, UEFI, okay, the boot option, save this, that's it, peripherals. Now, since we're not using any um, dedicated graphics card, so the initial display output will be the uh, onboard graphics, so it's IGFX. Um, there's ambient LED, there is a LED on the motherboard, and that's a yes. Um, 
problem just doesn't matter. Um, now NVMe, um, there is no NVMe device on the board. Um, let me see. Enabled. Chipset. Now make sure this is disabled. Um, of course, it doesn't support it. Internal graphics. Uh, enable. Uh, this. Uh, I'm just gonna set down the maximum. Now this doesn't really matter. We can land, disable. Okay, after you set everything, you just save and exit. All right guys, after you update the BIOS and um, uh, boot from the uh, installer, and this window should come up. Now just to let you guys know that I will not be showing you the uh, installation guide, uh, how to create a USB drive. Um, please check out my other video. I will leave a card uh, above the screen. Um, please click on that if you are interested. All right, let's begin the installation. Choose the default language you want to use, if it's not English. And uh, the next one is format the drive you have. So for my instance, I have a uh, Intel SSD, 240 gig. Uh, that's this one here. It is already formatted, but I will uh, do a reformat. So it's uh, Mac uh, OS uh, Sierra and then erase. So after this, you can close it and begin the uh, OS installation. So now this uh, select the drive you just format it now this will take uh, a while so if you want to just go for a coffee and a nap or whatever you want to do feel free so come back around about 10 15 minutes i think um yeah it should be ready all right after the installation and the system restart you will see this screen uh, simply uh, boot uh, from the hfs so that is the your system drive. All right, when you see this screen, that means you are halfway there. And just go through the uh, questionnaires and uh, on-screen instruction. Okay, here's the um, uh, Mac OS here. We actually in now. Um, the first thing I would do, uh, I normally uh, just install the uh, UniBeast. Now we're gonna use UniBeast method. Uh, I find it's very straightforward and uh, easy to follow. Uh, it's just less hassle most of the time anyway. Uh, here is UniBeast uh, 9.1. I believe there is a new version. Uh, I probably would suggest you get the latest version uh, just for the newer drivers. So, but now I will go through this. Now this will install all the drivers into the uh, EFI uh, folder or partition. Now, after the installation of the drivers, uh, just restart the system and that should put into the system without the USB installer. Oh, voila. Now you have a functional uh, Hackintosh and put a password in. Here we go. Now you have a system up and running uh, the next step is just to uh, change a few settings for the remote access. Since this uh, system will be um, accessed remotely, it won't actually be connected to any monitors or TVs. So I will be using my main workstation to control this. So the setting I'm going to change is for the uh, sharing. When you are sharing the remote login or remote management or screen sharing, make sure if you want to give access to individual, uh, for instance, for this instance, it will be just me. So click on the uh, only this users and click on plus. Uh, look for the user you want to share. 
So now it's just, just me. I'm gonna take everything because I just wanna remote control this server completely. So that just me have access to it. Uh, click on this and same as remote login and just only me and everything everyone else is gonna be not allowed and uh, once you share the uh, remote login and the remote management the screen sharing will be automatically uh, enabled but because you can't tick it so that means everything is um, enabled by default once you uh, tick the remote login and remote management then that's it I mean this is enough for me to uh, to manage the this server remotely within my home network. Alright guys, that was complete installation of the hardware and the system, uh, macOS Sierra. Um, all in all, it was pretty smooth. Um, the case itself is fantastic. It can accommodate a uh, five, three and a half inch drive and two, uh, two and a half inch drive on the side panel. For now, there's only one and two and a half inch drive inside, uh, which is the Intel SSD. Uh, but I will be uh, swapping uh, two, three uh, terabyte, three and a half inch drive inside my uh, workstation at the moment. I will be swapping those two into this uh, file server, uh, the new build, um, alongside with this uh, two terabyte uh, WD Blue, uh, three and a half inch drive. So there will be totally three, three and a half inch drive in this server. And there are also two spare SATA uh, ports uh, on the board uh, just for the uh, near future storage expansion if I ever need it. Uh, now, in this video, I did not go through uh, detailed uh, system settings or the uh, multi beast installation uh, uh, drivers or those things. That's because this build is purely for server point of view. So all I wanted is a functional Hackintosh system. Uh, the system is kind of bare minimum. Um, it's run on the uh, the minimum uh, configuration as long as functional uh, for this purpose. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video, and hopefully, you guys uh, learned something you didn't know about. Um, if you liked the video, please click on the like and share with others. If you didn't like the video, you know what to do. And also, please click on the subscribe button to keep up with my channel. And for future video updates, I will sure do more video like this in the future. So see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.